First off, yes, that is my alarm that goes off every morning and I wake up too. Secondly, I didn't technically do nothing for this 30 days. It was just I did nothing for one hour every day for 30 days. Let me explain a little bit. There was one day I was working on my laptop. I wasn't charging it while I was using it. And there was a pretty bad storm going on. And the power ended up going out shortly thereafter. And not only did the uh, power go out, my laptop ended up dying. So I basically had no technology with my laptop dead. The TV was out. There was no Wi-Fi. So it was basically cut off from technology except for my phone. The power ended up going out for about two to three hours. And what did I end up doing during that two to three hour period? Yep, you probably guessed it. I was scrolling on my phone throughout that whole time, but I will give myself some credit because I did read one chapter in a book. But other than that, I couldn't really help the boredom and just ended up going on my phone. We live in such a fast paced world where we're constantly going, our minds bouncing around, and we found a cure for that boredom whenever we have that second of downtime. We can just turn to our phones, which allows us to open up to a whole new world. There are times, maybe say, when we're in the grocery store and we're waiting in line. We can't just wait that extra three minutes and maybe stare off into space or maybe talk to someone. I know during these times it's a little bit more tough, but just being able to be present, maybe with our thoughts and just think about what we're actually thinking about or what's going on around us. We got to pull out our phone for those extra three minutes that we're just waiting in line for. Maybe even when we're walking around in public, we've got to be on our phones and not appreciating what's around us. Or even when you're with your friends just hanging out watching TV or going out to eat or just hanging out. We often find ourselves just going on our phone and checking our phone. Maybe it's during a commercial or even while we're watching TV, we'll just be on our phones and we'll be with say one or two or five maybe friends and we aren't really communicating with them. We're just kind of on our phones living in this virtual world. Or maybe when we're out to eat, we'll just always be on our phones instead of being present in that moment with their friends, talking with them and just having a conversation with them. I remember the first time I was in college, I had one of my business professors tell a story about his son and he had some friends over and they were swimming in the pool or just hanging out in the backyard and they were all on their phones and he goes up to them and says, why don't you just invite those people over that you're texting or whatever you're doing with them? Why don't you invite them over? We have these artificial relationships online and we tend to be losing the ones that are right in front of us. The funny thing is about that, if they did end up inviting those people over that they were texting or communicating with online, they would probably be doing the exact same thing to other people when those people were over. So it's kind of ironic or funny that if they had those people over, they would probably just end up switching to someone else because it's kind of ingrained in us to just go online and communicate with people that way. I try to do my best whenever I'm, say, out with friends or family eating or just hanging out with some friends or even in the grocery line to not just reach for my phone. But sometimes we do fall for it because it's just so ingrained in us and it's just so easily there. And we've just made it such a big habit to just reach in our pockets and grab our phone. And one big reason that's had a really big lasting impact on my life and why I actually do that is because of this video from Simon Sinek. And he just kind of talks about not being on our phone and just basically the millennial generation and it's a really good video that i'll link in the description but sure i'm not saying never be on your phone when you're with other people it's great to capture the moment say with pictures or videos so you can relive that later down the road but at the same time i feel like we struggle with being bored and technology has been a big fix for us so after the power came back on and I was starting to wind down, getting ready for bed, I kind of thought to myself, the power was just out for however many hours and I couldn't just be there and be present. I couldn't just hang out, appreciate what's around me. I had to fill it with aimlessly scrolling on the internet. So I ended up thinking about it and I wasn't a big fan of it. So I ended up texting my buddy. So with him challenging me, 
I decided to dive in, see if I could withstand doing nothing for 60 minutes, and let me tell you, that was a lot harder than I originally anticipated it being. That first day proved to be the hardest, and as the days went on, it got slightly easier from there, but 60 minutes goes by so slowly if you're doing nothing. My advice, if you want to slow down time, either sit there and do nothing or stare at the clock. That first hour was one of the longest hours of my life, but I'm happy to say that I did actually make it through. The main struggle was I had no idea how much time had passed. I couldn't tell the time. I didn't have my watch on. I couldn't look at my phone. It was literally just me laying down, staring at the ceiling, so I had no perception of time. And I just kind of kept thinking, did I set the right time? Did I forget to set it? Did I have it on silent? And there was just all these thoughts going through my mind, and I really wanted to check my phone. But I really didn't want to because it was the first day, and I didn't want to start the first day on a bad note where I check my phone and I start developing this bad habit of checking my phone because I literally want to do nothing. So getting through that first day was really hard and it was just kind of pushing myself to think that I set the time, I set the right time and just kind of reminding myself that it will go off and it's just going to take a little while. And I just had to little, give myself a little bit of a push to actually make it there. It was just me, my thoughts, and the sounds that you might not notice or get overlooked. The sound of the air going through the system throughout the house, the wind blowing the leaves in the tree, the distant train horn, so many sounds that end up getting overlooked or overheard. I ended up powering through that first day and it ended up being a big struggle and I know I'm making it seem kind of like it was extremely hard and for me it was a little bit more difficult than I anticipated and that's probably where all that struggle came from. But I ended up making it through it and basically what I learned from this 30 day challenge was how much my mind races. It would literally be from over here to over there to over here to over there to over there and it would just be all over the place and I would be thinking about 500 different things within like say three minutes and then at the end of it I would be thinking how the heck did I end up over here thinking about this specific topic or like this specific person it was just all over the place and it's kind of no wonder why we have such short attention spans because our mind is literally traveling so much and so fast. With the amount my mind was jumping around, it's no wonder why we struggle to focus on, say, one singular task or we get so restless whenever we're doing something and we get bored so easily. Having this whole hour to do nothing gave me a lot of time to just be there and do nothing and actually pay attention to how my mind works and how it actually bounces around so much to actually pay attention intentionally to how it works. This is kind of similar to the past where I've told myself that I need to or I should start meditating and I just tell myself that I can't do it because I can't just sit there for that long or my mind can't focus. But I do meditate before bed or try to for say like 5 or 10 or 15 minutes just before bed. And my mind still does race around. But I just try to focus on my breath and breathing in and then breathing out. But my mind does still race around. And I may have been able to do that while doing this challenge. But just focusing on my breath for a whole hour is a long time to actually do that for and my mind still races around during that five to 15 minute period that I do meditate before bed. So doing it for a whole hour would still be a little bit difficult to do, or at least try out. Those first few days or the first week were some of the longest hours of my life. And I know I'm sounding a little bit dramatic here, but they were really long hours. And eventually I kind of tried to be intentional with that time and be intentional with my mind and where it, where I was focusing it. I started to reflect on my previous day and plan for the day ahead of me where I would think about what I did well yesterday, what didn't go well, what I liked, what I enjoyed and what I could have improved on and just different thoughts like that and it helped me get my mind on track on a little bit or have a map to a destination but I did end up veering off that path every now and then thinking about different stuff and I allowed myself to do that but I would cut, try and bring myself back to where I was at. And then I would continue thinking about what I was reflecting on or I would just kind of jump back to where I was. And then I would also plan for today and think about what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do well, and just try and have a plan for that day. And it kind of helped me out for a little bit. And it didn't really cover the whole hour, but it did give me some actual intentionality with that hour and where I was focusing my mind and my energy and it helped a lot keep my mind, say, on a single path and not really veer off onto 17, I don't know how many different topics in such a short period of time. So I'd kind of be going in one direction and every now and then I would just maybe stop and come back on and then I would just keep going. So that 
really helped me stay on track with what I was thinking about and being intentional with it. So with all that extra time, I would try and focus on that stuff that I might overlook, like different sights or sounds. It was mainly sounds because I was all I could really look at was my ceiling, and I didn't really have anything else to look at. Maybe if you're like you're out in the wilderness, and if you were to do this, you could pay attention to different sights that you're around. Whereas with this, it was just more so about the sounds and stuff that you overlook. So that's something that if I was in a different situation or in a different location, I would be able to pay more attention to the sights where with this, it was just kind of the sounds. A side note to all this is it's kind of funny or ironic because back in college, I had an English class and the professor assigned us a homework assignment to go and find an extremely quiet, secluded area. And then you basically just sit there for an hour and you basically do exactly what I just did. And I just did it for 30 days. And when I was in college, it was a homework assignment. So I obviously didn't do it because I don't do homework very often. So it's just kind of funny or ironic that I literally do the exact same challenge that she had us doing that I ended up skipping because I didn't want to do it. But you also had to write a paper on different sights and sounds that you had to do. So I find it kind of funny or ironic that I end up doing it for a 30 day challenge. Now, as much as I'd like to say that this changed me and I'm a completely new man, I don't think it necessarily did that for me. I think it did help me be a little bit more mindful when it comes to my phone and just picking it up more so when I was say watching TV instead of watching TV and being on my phone and not necessarily watching TV. It's just focus on one and not reach for my phone, especially while sitting at my desk, the phone's right there. It's just so easy to grab. So I think that discipline from the first day from holding myself back from hold or picking it up, it kind of helped build that discipline over that 30 days. So I think it helped a little bit in that aspect. I would say with friends also, but that video from Simon Sinek helped me out a lot as well to be mindful about that and be intentional on not picking your phone up and just kind of being present in that moment and not being on your phone whenever you get bored. I feel like this has tried to make me do nothing when I'm waiting or if I have nothing going on. Instead of just reaching for my phone and going on there and aimlessly scrolling, I feel like I'm more mindful to just be able to do nothing and resist the urge to actually just grab my phone. But another thing with that is I think the scheduled summaries that Apple just released in the video that I just went over has also had a really big impact on that where I'm not getting those notifications throughout the day. So I'm not as tempted to actually go and pick up my phone and look at the notifications or any messages that I do have because they aren't showing up anymore. Although I would say it's helped me become more mindful about what I'm thinking and what I'm doing, I don't think I'll be blocking off an hour time slot to just do nothing throughout the day. Maybe 5, 10, or 15 minutes blocked off to just do nothing, be with my thoughts. I don't see anything wrong with that and I think it could honestly help me because I'm always going and instead of just going on my phone and wasting time there, I think blocking it off to be 5 to 15 minutes of just doing nothing, I don't think that can hurt at all. We live in such a fast paced world that every now and then it's good to just shut off, be with our thoughts and escape the rush of life. If you want, I'm challenging you to do nothing for say 5 to 15 minutes. You can tell your friends about it and they can do it with you as well. Just set an alarm, find somewhere comfy, your bed, the floor, comfy chair, whatever it may be. Just set your alarm and just do nothing for 15, 5, 15, 10 minutes, however long. Maybe if you want to go for 60 minutes, by all means, be my guest. But just be there with your thoughts and I would eliminate as many distractions as possible, say like headphones or your watch because you'll probably end up checking it to see what time it is and how much time has passed and how much time you have left. I would just eliminate all those distractions as possible. Just be there for five to 15 minutes and be with your thoughts. Listen to the sounds around you that you often overlook and just take a little bit to escape the rush of life. It's a great way to slow down in this fast paced world that we're living in. Build some discipline and maybe even some positive habits around being away from your phone and you don't need to worry. I'm sure everything is still going to be there after the 5 to 15 minutes, however long you're away from your phone. I'm sure everything will still be there. If you're interested in these 30 day challenges and maybe even joining me along while I'm doing these at the same time, I release them in my newsletter if I am doing any challenges for that month. So if you would like to sign up for that, I'll leave a link in the description below and you can sign up for my newsletter there.
I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it inspires you to be a little more intentional with your day and maybe slow down in this fast paced world and just be with your thoughts and escape the fast paced world. As always, thanks for watching and let's level up.